We're getting back to work this week to prepare for a challenging road trip to Louisiana, and we're addressing the areas that we need to shore up in order, order to put ourselves in a chance to, to win football games. Our goal this week is to go 1-0, uh, like always. Our players and staff have uh, been through a lot over the last 9 or 10 days, but uh, we are Mountaineers, uh, resilient, tough, strong, and um, we're going to make sure we go out Saturday and represent the A in, in the right way. Bob Dillner, Appalachian Weekly News, App TV. Uh, Sean, just want to you talk about shoring up some areas and so forth. Uh, what's your evaluation? You had had some time to take a look at that game and so forth. What are some of those areas that you're really going to concentrate on this week going into Louisiana? Well, first and foremost, we make sure we don't turn the football over on offense. I thought you take those two turnovers away, uh, and it's a one point game at halftime. And I thought we ran the ball well. Early, I thought Joey was making some great decisions. He liked to have two throws back. Uh, on defense, we make sure we fit our gaps the right way. And in our defense, it's a challenging defense to go against. But if you don't fit your gaps the right way, and uh, it's a recipe for disaster. And some of the big plays that uh, we gave up um, against Marshall, uh, one player didn't fit their gap the right way. And, and you look at the the first half. If you take um, the 75-yard screen play away, there's 100 yards of offense and giving up 14 points instead of 21. So. So uh, we're addressing those as we speak. We got in at uh, 2 o'clock Sunday morning. We were back in here at 9 o'clock uh, Sunday morning to, to me as a staff. And um, I, I met with the offense, met with the defense, the special teams, and uh, to make sure we get things corrected. That's my job as the head coach, to get it corrected. And I know we will. Uh, I think we have great players and great kids that want to do the right thing. But if you, know, uh, you have to make sure you do your job. And you can't try to overcompensate and try to make – the play when it's not your play. If we do that, then uh, we'll have a better football team. In the past, Sean, you've said it's an eyes thing for the defense. Do you think that's still the seeing how things develop, or do you think it's something else? No, I think it's your, you know, when defensive football is your eyes and feet. You got to make sure your, your cleats are on the ground, you make sure your eyes are in the right place. If it's, if it's a split flow play where the tight end comes across, our linebackers got to add on to the opposite side. And um, if it's a middle of the field coverage and we're out in the middle of the field, then you know, that's not doing your job. And again, it's not because they're not trying to do the right thing. It's just trying to overcompensate. And if we get back to just doing our job, we'll have a better chance for success. Hey, before I give up this microphone, I want to talk a little bit about this community around here, everything that everybody's been through. Uh, your players have been out there volunteering. You've been out there. Um, can you just give us something in terms of, you know, how inspired you have been with this community in Western North Carolina, especially around this part of the high country? Yeah, I'm very proud of everyone in uh, Western North Carolina, especially here with Talga County. Uh, it's, it's different when you know people who are going through those struggles right now and lost things, and we want to do our part. And football is very important. It is. There's nobody wants Appalachian to win more than Sean Clark. I can promise you that. But the people in this town uh, mean something to me. And uh, um, we will make sure we're here for them. Chris Olmec, WLOS. Uh, along that same vein, your team was so active in the community last week, helping out where they could. What does that look like this week? Uh, are you going to kind of keep that same mindset? We are. I think that's the most important thing right now, uh, to get out and give back. I mean, our, our community means a lot to us. We mean a lot to them. So to make sure we get back and make them proud. But we're going to make sure we continue to do the right thing, and the right things to, to volunteer, to get with people in the community, get with other organizations, to make sure we're so, uh, giving water. Uh, to, this morning we're loading generators on helicopters uh, as we speak. And I think that speaks volumes to the character we have right now. Uh, football's not, we're not winning right now the way we should be winning. But again, I'm very proud of our players, the way they represent this university and the way they represent this town. What do you hope this experience impresses upon the players and maybe changes them going forward? Well, it's, you know, it's one of the situations that um, I think it just talks about life. Uh, and there's going to be circumstances in life that don't go your way. And, uh, Chris, you can speak for this yourself. You went through some hard times here as well with the storm. Um, but what do you do? Do you just give up or do you go back to fighting? And, and I think it gives us a great life lesson um, to when things aren't go, doesn't go your way, uh, or what are you going to do? What are you going to be uh, remembered for? To get back up and get back to work and get your family in the ground. It's no different if you're a, a coach or a, a someone out in the real world that, that loses a job. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit or are you going back to work and support your family? And that's, uh, that's one of the lessons I hope we learned this week. Uh, before I ask my final questions, I do want to thank you for your concern and that from Joey and Brett and everybody here at App State. It's really meant a lot uh, during this time. Uh, when you look at Louisiana, the offense seems pretty balanced. What, what stands out about them? All of it. 
They have great players, a great quarterback. Their offensive line blocks very well. Uh, they have two running backs that, uh, that can really um, give you those three and four yards at a time and have the speed to go the distance. Uh, the receivers are excellent. And what impresses me most of all, the receivers, they, like, they block. And, and that's hard to find in college football. So they do a great job blocking the perimeter. And But again, a great football team. Uh, Mike's done a great job there. And um, so we look forward to this opportunity to play on Saturday. David Ware, 24-7 Sports. Sean, you mentioned some individual breakdowns defensively. You know, um, single guys that are that are busting their reads or not in the right place. In terms of of moving into this week and just dealing with, um, let's call them repetitive mistakes. What is the process for you guys assessing the personnel on that side of the ball and and evaluating where changes may need to be made? Well, we met uh, yesterday morning uh, as that get our best personnel on the football field, and uh, we had our team meeting yesterday. I told them every job's up for for grabs right now, and we'll make make a decision on uh, Thursday or Friday morning who will be starting the football game. We got to make sure we get the right people in the right spot, and when they're in the spot, to go make a football play. And uh, you mentioned uh, some different plays or specific plays you're talking about. Well, I mean, you know, the the long screen play that you mentioned was one. You know, they they had a a, a couple of touchdown runs that broke pretty wide open. Um, they had the late touchdown pass that also was a, a pretty clean path to the end zone. It just seemed like, <coughs> you know, it, it, it's one thing to get beat on a good play by mm -hmm. an offensive player when you're in the spot and they just make a play on you. It's another thing when somebody's walking into the end zone basically uncovered. Yeah, I'll speak for the, the screenplay. We had four players over, and they had three players. And uh, we had to make sure we, we had three guys fit outside of it and one guy supposed to be on the other, other side of it. And then if you don't fit it right, that's a touchdown. Um, the long pass, we were in a cover two shell, and uh, we were rolling to three. And the safety's got to get off the hash and the, to the left upright. And again, he's trying to make a play. The quarterback pumped it one side and brought it back to the three receiver side. And um, but we have to be on the right, correct, upright. The the long run you talked about, I believe, was going toward their scoreboard. And it was a zone read, uh, a zone a split flow play. The tight end goes across, and we have to make sure our backers are over top of that. If we do that, one's boxing, one's spilling, and one's boxing, one should be in the right spot to make that play. Um, but again, it's those are correctable things we had to get corrected, and those are day one. Um, installs day one things we have to get done and um, I know we will there's no doubt in my mind our players go out there and get it corrected that was the third offensive line different starting combination you've put on the field in the last three weeks and you mentioned you guys got the run game going um, what what did you see out of this particular starting group that maybe started to click and, and open up some of that space? I thought, I thought we ran the ball well. A lot of times it's, it's you have to be able to move someone off the line of scrimmage. And these games are, are one up front. And I thought our guys battled well. Uh, and we, I think we ran 96 plays on offense for a little under 500 yards. I take the two picks back and the two sacks we had. But we did some good things, things we can build upon. And it's, you have this new offensive lineman that are getting used to one another. Sometimes uh, it's never perfect. It's going to be what we call dirty runs and dirty plays at three or four yards is a good run. And I thought our running backs ran hard for the most part um, and gave us a chance to win. And I'm proud of our players for not never giving up. And again, we're down 21 10 at halftime. We got to stop there by our defense. We're three and out. Now our offense got to do a better job going on the field and scoring points. We have momentum several times in the game that we couldn't capitalize on. But uh, there, you know, there's no doubt in my mind we'll, we have to put a great performance on the field Saturday. There were some players, some projected starters every week who were missing on Saturday due to injury. A um, couple of guys came out dinged up on Saturday as well. Can you give us a health update and, and how you think that plays forward towards the future of the season? I'm trying to think which ones it would be. Do you have any specifics? Horn. Uh, Christian Horn, uh, he's going to be day by day. He suffered an injury in practice last week. Uh, Michael Hughes will be out for several weeks with a lower body injury uh, that happened uh, during the storm. Um, but um, we hope to get some players back. Michael Hurts is practicing uh, this week. I'm sorry, Jason Hurts. Michael's his dad. He's a high school coach in, in Charlotte. Jason will uh, be back this week. He's practicing practice yesterday. We'll give us some depth at nose guard. Um, we, we do have several guys that are out for the year, and, and that hurts the depth wise. But again, I think our players are, are giving their all and giving our best opportunity to win the football game. David Rogers, High Country Sports. Um, uh, speaking of the running backs, we didn't see Anderson Castle at all on, on, on this weekend, and there were a couple of short yardage situations. Mm -hmm. What's his status? 
day by day. Uh, he was injured um, this past week, and uh, when Anderson Castle says he's sore or a hurt, then you trust Anderson Castle. And we're never going to put a player in a position to hurt himself worse. Uh, it was uh, doctors and trainers said it probably wouldn't be a good, good idea to play him a lot at running back. He could play some special teams, and that's what we did. So I trust Anderson Castle. When he's healthy to come back, he'll tell me, and he'll, he'll be back in rotation. There was something I think it was a hundred, plus 150 some odd penalty yards. Uh, how do you correct that? That's not good. Yeah, 15 penalties for 158 yards, I believe. Uh, you know, there's there's penalties, there's football penalties, and then there's dumb penalties. Those sportsmanlike penalties, those are unacceptable. Those have been addressed. Those have been uh, taken care of yesterday uh, through some ways. But again, we never we never condone unsportsmanlike conduct. That, that's hurting yourself. That's hurting your football team. A pass interference, that's a football play. That happens. A holding call, that happens. But we can't hurt ourselves. Um, and get dumb penalties. And those were some dumb penalties we had on Saturday. I'm aware there's some other professionals or uh, athletes around in the area that lost housing and so forth in, in, uh, because of the storm. Is everybody OK with regard to housing and uh, on, 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 on the App State football team? Yes, we uh, going back to earlier, we had 28 players. This is last Monday without uh, water or power. Uh, our athletic director, Doug Gillen, did a great job help us get places to live. We have some in hotels. We have some in apartments now. So uh, as of Wednesday, we were all uh, had power. We all had water. Uh, again, this is a, uh, that's a, a thank you to Doug and his staff, our university. Uh, again, I'm proud of our university, Chancellor Norris, who's feeding our community here at, at App State and Central Dining. So uh, we're going to make sure our, our players' safety is first and foremost, and we'll continue to do that. Zach Colburn with Target Democrat. Coach, you know, I know the next home game is two weeks away, and I know there's been a lot of home games in limbo. What kind of update has um, Doug Gillen given you on that? Uh, you have to ask Doug. Uh, again, uh, we're, we're day by day. Uh, so that's a Doug Gillen question. Uh, I would love to play here in Boone if we could, but we're going to do what's best for Watauga County and Boone, North Carolina. And if that's to play here, we'll play here. If that's to play somewhere else, we'll play somewhere else.